So we're going to be making some additions to the form we created in the last video. So in that video, we made a text field, a text area, a select field, and then also a checkbox. Now for each one of those, we handled when a event would happen or when a change would happen by creating its own function to handle it. So here we have handle change, here we have handle change for your favorite pet, and so on. Now, if you look at what those actually look like, they look very similar. They each take an event and they each use either event.target.value or event.target.checked and they just update the state. And what's different is the names for each of them. Now, right now, you may be thinking that's a lot for each time we make a text field or an input that we have to create a function up here every single time. But we can actually condense this into a single function. And so that's what we're going to look at how to do that today. So really the main thing that's changing right now is this right here, um, is the name of the field and then whether its value is checked or not. So we're going to change handle change now is going to take a second parameter. So this is the first way we're going to look at it. And the second parameter is going to be the field name. And I'm just going to console log the field name right now so you guys can see what that value is. So now here, instead of saying on change, I'm going to create a lambda function here. So I'm going to say e or event. And what this is going to call is it's going to call the handle change passing in the event and then the name that I want, which in this case, the state name is name. So I'm going to pass name in there. So give that a save. So now every time on change, we're going to fire an event and we're going to call handle change passing in that event and then also the name. So we want to do the same thing here. So now I'm going to say event and this dot handle change pass in the event and then the name, which is favorite pet here. And now what's going to happen is when I'm typing in this field, it's going to be name, but when I'm typing in this field, it's favorite pet. So now you'll notice in each one of those, this has the value of what we want right here. So field name contains name or contains favorite pet. So what I want to do here is say field name, but I don't want to update the field name in the state. I want to, I want to update the value of field name. So this is a string and the value of it. So to be able to do that, you put brackets around it. Um, so what that's going to do now is as I'm typing in this field, you'll notice it's actually updating the favorite pet field because it's getting the value of that. So you can think of, in this case, it's replacing it with favorite pet. So these are equivalent when the value of field name is equal to favorite pet. So that will allow us to now make this generic. And so we don't need to console log this anymore. And I can now change it for, we'll come back to what we're going to do with the checkbox, but I can do the same thing over here in my select field. So I'm going to say event, this dot handle change, and we're going to pass in our event and the name of it, which is title. So now I can get rid of both this handle select and handle handle favorite pet. We now have a single handle change for those. Um, and so now we can switch that off and that seems to be working good as well. So now how do we handle this check? Well, if we wanted to, we could add a third parameter and we could say whether this is a checkbox or not. So if it's a checkbox and we're just gonna do a ternary function, then we wanna look at event.target.checked Otherwise, we want to handle that. So let's scroll over and see what I did. So if someone passes, so this is going to be a true or false that someone passes in. So if it, and we can call it is checkbox. That's a better name. So is checkbox. Um, if it is a checkbox, then we want to get the checked event. Otherwise, we want to get the value event. So now instead of using handle check over here, I can say event this dot handle change and we're going to pass in our event our field name which is uh, remember me and then lastly whether it's the checkbox which is true now notice we're not passing in um, that checked over here is false by default it's going to pass undefined which will evaluate to false so we don't need to pass it to all these handle changes that are going to be false anyway so now our checkbox is now handled by that one function. So now we have a single function that is handling all of our fields right here. Now we can make this even better. 
And the way we can do that is by removing this lambda. So right here, we are creating a lambda every single time. So that's not super efficient. So we can improve this by passing this handle change directly in. But how do we know what the field name is and whether it's a checkbox? Well, we can actually pass in the field name as a prop called name. So I can say name is equal to name, and then I can get access to that by saying event.target.name. So that'll give you access to the name that the user put right here. So if I'm typing in this field, you'll notice it says name the console log here. Um, so that's exactly what we want. So now we're just gonna replace field name with event.target.name. And we can, uh, I guess we'll keep it like that for now. Um, so now when I'm typing this field, it works because it knows that the name is equal to name and it updates. So now I can change each one of these. So the name of this is going to be favorite pet. And now I can change that to this. And now my text area will update when I'm doing the text area. My input will update when I'm doing the input. And I can do the same thing with my checkbox. So here I'm going to say, remember me. The only difference is how do we know that this is a checkbox? Well, notice we have this type that we set the checkbox. So we can actually access this right here. Instead of, so we can say is checkbox is equal to event.target.type is equal to checkbox. So if it's equal to checkbox, then we know it is a checkbox. All right, so now we just take a single event as a parameter and we can now handle all these cases down here. And also it works for the select field as well. So now I'm going to play the name of title and we can pass that in. So the previous solution worked just as good as this one, but this is a slightly more optimized version. And now you can see all the fields still work as intended. But now we only have one function that handles all of them and handles both checkboxes, input fields, text areas, all that stuff. Now there's one last thing I want to show you guys. So right now we have this button and the on click when I click it, it submits the form and we can see it here. Now, you usually want to actually submit this form by wrapping this with a form tag. So there's some benefits to doing that. One of the benefits is uh, I can hit enter and it's going to submit the form for me. So how do I know when the form is submitted? Well, there's going to be an on submit called. So now I can pass it the handle submit. And now instead of saying on click here, I can make this button a type submit. So because I made this button a type submit, um, HTML knows when I click on it that it should um, submit the form and this on submit is going to be called. Now the default way of how form works is it refreshes the page. So I'm typing stuff and when I submit, it refreshes the page. You'll notice it cleared it and it put some stuff in our browser up here. And the stuff it put is actually the values of the form. So what we can do is we want to prevent that from happening. We want to prevent the default behavior. So this on submit will actually send us a event. So we can say event, and then there's a function on this called prevent default. And what that will do is it'll prevent the form from being submitted or not submitted, but refreshed. So now I submit, you'll notice it did not refresh and we can actually see in our console what the values are. So the nice thing about that is I can just hit enter well, not in the text area, but in one of my fields. And what that will do is it'll now submit my form. Um, Cause that is usually something people like to do is not even have to click on the button to be able to submit. So those are some ways that we can uh, up our form. We've now made it simpler to add fields cause we have a single function to handle them. And then we made our form easier to submit by wrapping it in a form tag. In tomorrow's video, we're gonna make our form even better by adding some validation to it.